I'm going to show you an app that I've been using for several years for recording sound and it's called HiQ. Now the reason I use this is because what's different from most built-in sound recorders on phones and devices is that they don't have gain control and this does and that's quite important because even in the digital era you still want um, a good quality signal uh, basically the hottest signal without getting into distortion so you really want it to go into the yellow zone uh, but only briefly momentarily touching the red and you can just slide this up and down to change the amount of gain uh, zero db is of course just standard level signal and here's an example of it going into the yellow and you'll see just only momentarily touching the red and that is a nice hot signal um, but it's not too hot so that you get clipping distortion. When you finish recording sound, you'll see the name, the file name of the most recent recording at the bottom of the screen. And you can either click on the bin button to delete it or click on the share fold, uh, button to, to share it. If you click on share, this is what you'll see and you'll see your Google Drive there. And if you click on that, that will take you to where you can choose which folder you want to save it in for transferring it to your PC and then click on save at the bottom. But if the one you want to send isn't the most recent one, then instead click at the icon on the top left hand corner. That will take you to the screen which lists every single recording you've got. Now then when you select a recording that you want to share, it gives you the option to uh, share and send and you select that and that then takes you to the same screen where you can select your Google Drive and then you select the folder and then press save at the bottom of the screen okay so we're starting a new project and we've got um, video and we've got the separate accompanying audio and a separate file uh, we can just drag the video down onto the timeline and it will automatically create the video track um, now we need to separately create the audio track or any additional tracks in fact so we can add audio track and we've now got the audio track um, we can also add another video track in front of this one if we want to add things like titles and so on uh, so we've created that now we need to make sure that ripple is off the so that when we drag this down it uh where did it go yeah it's uh oh we want snap on actually as well so that it nicely lines it up at the beginning even though we're going to edit it now these aren't matched to each other i'm just doing it for an example but that's how you create a separate audio track um, to go with the video. Right, three, two, one. Now, if you've ever wondered what the clapperboard is for, you know that thing when they show the beginning in in the, like the raw film, they have the, the board with a thing that comes down. What that's to do, it's as well as identifying the exact shot um, for editing and so on like that, editing purposes, um, it's also to help synchronize sound with the picture. Now, if you haven't got a clapperboard, then you can just clap like I just did, because that creates both a visual and an auditory signal uh, to make it easier to get a rough synchronization of the sound at the very least. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to also do some commentary to the um, video you've already done. Um, in order to uh, show how to synchronize um, sound you've recorded separately with, say, you know, like commentary, for example, that you've recorded on one device with a game um, where the sound is completely separate. Okay, what I'm going to show you here is how to sync um, sound and video where you've got, um, where, well, it is going to be a particular type. So first I'm going to drag um, the video to the end here 
and we want to go there that's gonna oh I want to toggle on snap on actually um, now I want to take ripple all tracks off because I'm now going to in, add the sound to a separate track and if I didn't take ripple all tracks off it would insert it um, and shift the video along and which isn't what I want so there now these are not going to be perfectly in sync and I'll tell you the reason why and that's because um, when I would originally recorded this I stopped in the middle and restarted the video but I kept the recording the audio recording going so that's not going to line up but let's just take a look at the raw video first of all okay recording three, so that's the two, audio one. you can hear now there are a couple of ways of syncing sound and video okay now what we want to do is synchronize the sound clap to that clap there that will give us a rough um, synchronization um, but in fact of course this is the wrong audio recording because this is the audio recording from the first attempt I did at recording the video so what I need to do I'm looking for a gap significant gap where right here we go I think this is the Let's just play the audio of this bit. Okay, that's where I stopped the video recording. That noise. And that's where I started it again. And this is the one you're seeing now. Right, three, two, one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Um, now I've got the... I may need to make sure that Ripple All Tracks is off because I'm only going to edit the audio here. So I'm going to start here and do a cut. So that split the audio into two tracks and I'm going to select this one. That's the first recording essentially and delete that. So that's shifted the audio along. Now let's go back. Oh, okay, I just need to click on this actually. This will take me back to the previous edit. Here we go. Right, let's... Right, three, two, one. Right, there's the audio clap. Where's now, the video clap? If you've ever wondered... There it is, right. So that video clap there is what we need to synchronize this audio with. So the video claps around here. In fact, I'm going to turn on this audio. And you can see where that clap is. That's just there. So that's one, two, three, clap. And that's got to line up with this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this one back. Um, So it lines up approximately that's approximately lined up there remember this audio here is from the from my tablet actually that's that's what I recorded it on but this audio is from the microphone that you can see just up here And it's this, this is why we want to use this audio. Now, I could have just used the sound clap, but let's just, just go back here a minute and play it from here. And we should find that now. Right, three, two, one. In fact, the sound from both the... Because uh, I've got both sounds on here. I'm pointing at the screen so you can't see me. I've got that sound on and this sound on. They link up pretty well so I'm actually going to leave that as it is now um, I'm going to turn that off and now normally of course I would start the I would edit after I've done the synchronization that is so I'd remove this bit I'd trim it off the beginning because um, 
we don't want people to see it. We don't want people to see the synchronization thing. That's why the clapperboard bit is always trimmed off. But because I want you to see that in the finished video, I'm going to trim it about here. And so now I'm going to, I want to include ripple all tracks actually. I'm going to do a cut. And I'm going to select the video because that's the longest bit. And when I remove this here, it's now brought it all, should now have brought it all together. Where the heck did it go? That didn't go well. Ah, okay, right, let's do this, undo that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do an edit here. Now I'm going to, because the video here is the longest section, that's the one that goes right up there. Um, I'm going to do an edit around here, I think. Now I'm going to select the video because it's the video we want to cut. It's the video we, is, the, is the bit I want to remove. So I'm going to cut the video. It doesn't matter if it hasn't um, cut the sound because it's going because with ripple across all tracks it's going to remove this bit of sound as well. So now when I select this, it will just remove this section of track. And when I remove, when I click ripple delete here, even though I have not, the cut hasn't gone right across here, it will remove this bit of sound as well. So let's do that. Right now we should find, let's go back to the edit. We should find that this will now have, the, the sound and picture should now be synchronized. Right, three, two, one. Now, if you've ever wondered what the clapperboard is for, you know that thing when they show at the beginning in... It looks actually as though I'm slightly a teeny weensy bit ahead there, uh, the sound rather, or the video, I'm not sure, but that's as, good as, that's as good as it needs to be for this purpose. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And so what you'll see is this video I've just edited and me, the process of me editing it. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at ways to synchronize externally recorded sound with the video. And there are, there are really three things you can do. One is you can, um, you can make a verbal commentary on specific actions you're taking. So for example, I'm recording here on right from the very beginning so I'm going to click on play and so the moment I say the word play I'm also clicking on the button and you can see when that changes and so that will be a good synchronization point so every time you take a specific action that you can verbally express at the same time that's a good point for synchronizing um, another point is then comment. So there are really three ways. So another point is commenting on things that happen within the game that you are going to edit out, or you may not want to edit out, but but you may they may be good synchronization points. Uh, so now the first thing I'm going to mention here, which is a, a technicality really, because the screen recorder is recording at the original uh, screen resolution. I've got the in-game resolution 
set lower simply because I've got an old graphics card that can't really cope with the game at maximum resolution. So what you'll see is the game squash into the top left hand corner to some extent. But that's the technicality, it doesn't it's not really doesn't have any effect on synchronizing audio and video. So now here I've got another opportunity to synchronize sound and video uh, when I click on play. And we've got message of the day close. So that's another point. Now I'm going to go for solos here. That again, me clicking on the word solos, that's another point of synchronization. Um, I'm, I'm going to edit out some of this because it goes on for quite a long time. So that's two. That's two ways. Uh, sorry, the first way then is taking specific actions and commenting on them when you take the action. Oh, playlist. Okay, that's the second way. Something happens and you make a comment about it, or you specifically say, this has just happened. So you know then that your comment is going to be maybe half a second behind what actually happens. So that's the second way. The third way, really, is because I'm playing the sound of the game through loudspeakers. So um, this will also be picked up by your microphone. So what you can do is use specific uh, sounds that happen within the game um, in order to synchronize with your separate recording. Now, examples of, you know, some of the music, like the background music, that's not particularly good because it tends to be at an overall sort of volume level. But, for example, when you've got a commentator, uh, such as Call of Duty has, you can use... Check your gear and weapons. We go soon. Right, now that will make a particularly distinctive uh, sound wave. Let's just click on custom load out here. Oh, shit, we're starting. Oh, I'm in the water. Oh, I'm in the water. Oh, right, okay. Oh, I forgot I've used the mouse here. Uh, 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 let's go up the beach. Uh, let's have a quick go at this. Um, so things like, um, you know, the waveform within the game will Enemy often be... Into the oh, they're all over there. Where are they? I can't see them. Oh, there's one. Oh. Oh, oh. Ah! Ah! He's got me! Oh, no! I barely fired his shot. I'm not even sure I did, actually. No. Okay, he got me fair and square. Well, I'm just as crap at using the keyboard and mouse as I am at using a joystick, it seems, but never mind. Anyway, what you will see is that bullet, um, bullets, you know, or guns firing rather, they, they make particularly good points for synchronizing because they are such a distinctive waveform. Okay, that's probably all we need now for the purpose of demonstrating this. Okay, so I'm ready to synchronize that video. And um, so let, now I've got Ripple off at the moment and Ripple across tracks. So let me select that and drag that down to the video track. There we go. And let me select the audio and drag that down onto the audio track that I've already created. Okay, so now I've got these together. Now, there's a technicality that I discovered that because I was using software uh, screen capture, there's a chunk of, um, I'm not sure the technical reason, it may be when it was changing graphics resolution, but it definitely um, lost uh, some of the video. So the video is actually shorter than the sound. By that, what I mean is um, it doesn't line up all the way along um, and I have to go to the point after it changed screen resolution in order to synchronize things because if I do it from when I first first thought um, it then becomes out of sync later on. So what I originally said um, in the video which is about synchronizing with pressing play um, it doesn't work for this video because I'm using uh, I was using an on screen capture within the computer which, because of a technical issue, ended up being out of sync. Okay, but it does work later on. And it's, you shouldn't have the same problem if you're recording directly from uh, the HDMI signal. Uh, but I'm going to show you that anyway. 
well you'll have seen it so there's no point in me me doing that so what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to go to a point after uh, where the uh, where it changes resolution in order to start syncing so let me reduce the resolution a bit here and let's go along slightly to here let's see what's going on here right okay so um, let me go back slightly what's there okay it's collecting to online services let's go back a bit further Oop. okay hasn't changed resolution there Okay, right, so yes, yeah, so in fact, it's after this point. There's going to be a point <clears throat> where I change the video. Uh, sorry, where I press a button. Okay, as I as I said in the commentary, first of all. Now I'm just going to wait to get to this. It should be button. Should be okay. Right. So now I've got an opportunity to to press play and synchronise the sound with the video here, because I'm going to comment when I press play. So let's see how I do that. Right. Okay. So I've pressed. So that's about uh, 1 minute 37 seconds roughly that I press play on the video. Now let's see where it come where I press play on the sound. So now here I've got another opportunity to synchronize sound and video uh, when I click on play. Right, okay, now we see here that spike was where I said play. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag that back to here to around. Oh, I can't do that because um, I can't do that because in fact the the sound goes right up to the beginning. So what I need to do is go to this point here um, and drag it back approximately to here. Okay, so what we should now find uh, is that where I press play and so me saying the word play are in sync. The oh, okay, so I didn't drag the video quite far back enough. Uh, let's do another couple of seconds, about another second and a half maybe. Let's check now. Because that's the word play there when I say it there, so I want to check, see when I press the button. Uh, when I click on play. Now I think I've dragged it a bit too far. So. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, when I click on play. Right, that's about right. So I've now synced it roughly based on uh, me taking an action within the video and pressing and stating that I'm doing that at exactly the same time. So let's see how that progresses. And Close. And I do it again there, and that's all synced up. So again, I do it again. That's another point of synchronization. In fact, it didn't go on for quite a long time. This bit was fairly, fairly short, actually, unusually. So what we're now looking for to get really precise timing is in fact syncing the recorded sound with the in-game sound because that's when you get a really close match. But from this point on it should be, when you're doing commentary that should be as close as you need because you're going to suppress the, the in-game sound. 
speakers. And so um, this will also let's have be a look. By your microphone. So, what you can so do this this bit is going to carry on. Let's have a look here. Hold on. I'm just going to speed up a bit here because the in waiting for the bit where the in-game sound right. The in-game sound is starting around here. So we want to ch check that it's synchronized here. Now, now, do you hear that sound? That was um, that was kind of um, you had like an echo, like it's like two recordings, one slightly behind the other. So this is where you, where you can synchronize in-game sound with sound that's recorded on the microphone and get it really close. So I'm going to increase the resolution here quite a bit. Okay, and go back slightly. Um, ah, now there, there's a sort of shape that that looks like kind of similar. So let's go to here. Um, okay, I'll start to talk then as well, so that slightly obscured it. But I think these two little dips here should line up, maybe. So I'm going to, uh, and, and this lump here should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this back slightly. And it's only approximate because the sounds aren't exactly the same. Let's try that now and let's listen to the commentary. You can use gear and weapons. We go soon. Right, now that is pretty closely synced and I've just used essentially the um the the guy's voice which is it makes a fairly distinctive pattern here to sync the two up. There are other th sounds you can use as well, things like gunshots and so on. They make a really nice a sharp sound that's kind of a bit like a clapperboard really um, but what we should find here is that basically from now on it's essentially synchronized so let's get to a point where here we go okay um, I think we're here, back to hear some gunshots so things like um, you know, the waveform within the game will often be... okay now you can hear this commentary again is still synchronized by looking at the two waveforms. Okay, again, the those gunshots are pretty well lined up. I mean, I could take snap off actually. I could drag this just a tiny weeny bit. and that will probably improve it even more but we're really talking a very very fine degree of synchronization here and it doesn't really need to be that precise when we're doing game commentary but you can see how that that is uh, that's pretty close so now this should be perfectly synchronized what I'm all I need to do is to get to the end and um, Okay, I'm just going to reduce the resolution there. You can see that sound lines up and that's basically going to be the end of the recording, I think. Let's have a look. Okay, that's what we need now for the purpose of demonstrating this. Okay, so I'm going to do a cut there. Um, now here I want uh, ripple trim and rip ripple across all tracks on. And I, actually, I need to I need to do a cut on that video. And if I'm going to remove that, that's selected. And now if I remove that, um, it finishes nicely. And what I'm also going to do is remove the in-game audio. Uh, so uh, I'm going to sorry, I'm going to remove the 
Yeah, I actually didn't do that. I think I'll leave that on for now. Okay, let's see how that goes. Okay, so there's just something else I want to show you that I think is quite important, and this is partly the reason for having uh, sound and video on separate tracks anyway, is that you can alter the volume of your commentary in comparison with the soundtrack of the game. So I'm just going to play you a bit here where we can look at the, the uh, volume level of the game and of me, and you can see it goes basically hits the top. Now, even if there's soft uh, clipping, um, what we really want is to have a is to not get that high. So I'm just going to play you this now, and the key thing is watch this meter. And you see there, it went right up to the very top, right up to zero. That's too hot a signal, and in fact, generally it was a bit too loud. So what I'm going to do, I've got this video this video clip selected. And by the way, when you're changing the volume level of chunks of video, it's generally helpful to use low resolution so that you the whole length of the video is compressed down so you can easily see the sections. So I've got the video that I want to reduce the volume level. So I go I've got go to filters and click on plus and I want audio filters here and I want now you can use things like a compressor but what I'm really looking for is the gain and volume now the default setting is zero that means it's not going to change it but I want to reduce it by about 23 decibels let's try that let's go back slightly um, let's go back to here. Let's see if that makes a difference. Ah, ah, okay, got me. that oh. does because now if we oh, was that a loud bit there? Ah, he's got me. Oh no, I barely fired a shot. I'm not even sure I did actually. Yeah, I think that had that effect. Let's just double check. While it's rewinding, I'm not counting it. Okay, right, so let's just watch that again. Can't see them. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh. Ah, ah, he's got me. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right, so that's great. So we've, we've, what we've done, we've reduced it so that it's not actually going right up to zero. So that's effective. So minus 23 decibels is still quite loud. It goes up to almost zero, but not quite. So that's what we want. That's reduced the volume significantly. Now this other one here, this other audio track, where my commentary was really a bit too quiet. So again, I'm on filter. I've selected the audio track. I've selected the filters, and I'm going to add... Uh, the audio again and what I want is gain volume and this time I want to increase the uh, let's say 12 decibels that's roughly let's see what difference that makes to this sound here because it was a bit low it doesn't line up all the way along okay that's too much because you, if you watch there, that was that was hitting zero, um, and I have to go to the point after yeah. it changed screen resolution. So I'm just going to reduce that a bit, maybe to oops, Daisy. Say nine decibels. Uh, it's important to remember that in order to synchronize things because if I do it from when I first, first okay let's go back a bit and play that section again now I think when it's doing it fast forward it and fast rewind it's not filtering on it's not changing the volume it's doing this original volume let's just double check that after 
it changed screen resolution. In all yeah, OK, so we saw that it went into the reddish area, but first. it didn't actually hit zero. It, stopped, um, it then becomes out of oh, sync later on. I might have done just then. Let me check that again. In order to synchronise things, because if I do it from when I first first thought, um, it then becomes out of sync later on. So, what I originally said... Okay, that's maybe just a touch. That A couple of points there did hit that. So that should be enough. I'm going to rewind that slightly. I'm pretty sure that will be enough. ...out of sync later on. So, what I originally said um, in the video, which is about synchronising with pressing play, um, it does... That sounded good to me. It, it sounded like it was kind of going almost there, but wasn't actually going over and clipping. So I'm happy with that. I'll leave it as it is. Um, and though basically the overall volume of that should be fine now. So that is now ready to export.